Hello everyone, it's been a little while, but I would like to go back to this project that I've been working on to unlock these uh, Makita batteries that I've got that the charger no longer accepts. So as a recap, so what happened is one day I went to charge this battery and I believe the cells were unbalanced and the charger locked out the battery. And even though I've rebalanced the cells, the, there is some kind of a lockout flag in the battery itself that causes the charger to reject it. So if we look at this, a battery that charges correctly, we put on the charger and we'll see it immediately starts charging. And the battery that is in question, if we put it on the charger, it immediately rejects the battery. So what I've been attempting to do is use a, uh, um, a project that I've run across called Open Battery um, to reset the lockout flag inside the battery. So this project uses an Arduino. And oh, one other thing, so another test. So we have the drill, so I've got a drill. This is the battery that works, works just fine. And the non-working battery. However, I do have a Makita light and this seems to ignore that flag because this light works just fine. But regardless, I would like to use the battery inside the drill. So what I've done is I need to be able to interface as a recap. I need to be able to interface to this battery, which includes this, uh, is it eight pins? It, it includes a, a special connector here. And then of course, we've got the prongs for the positive and the negative of the battery cell. So what I've done in order to interface this is I bought a cheap charger off eBay which I dismantled. And I personally, I would not use this charger to charge the batteries because it, it doesn't look like it's exactly, um, it, it was very cheap. And the only reason why I bought this is to acquire this uh, connector on top. So what I've done is we've taken a, uh, an Arduino and I have hand soldered a Arduino shield and I have acquired the connectors that match up with what is in this uh, cheap China or cheap made in well it is made in China cheap charger that I got off eBay or I'm sorry not eBay that came off Amazon so we've got the power and we've got the data connector, which is this yellow connector here. And this will interface to the Arduino. And we'll put the shield on top. If you'd like to see the video of putting this shield together, I do have a video that I made of putting that together. Although it's a little long and drawn out, it basically goes through the entire process of dismantling this, creating this uh, shield, and testing out the software on it. So what we're going to do is, first of all, I have the open battery software up on the PC. So I will, um, I've got the uh, Arduino connected, so let's switch over to the PC. And first of all, we would like to uh, program the Arduino. So I've got the open battery um, open source project here, which I downloaded off the uh, author's website. I will provide a link to this in the description. But essentially, this just programs a... Uh, so the Arduino acts as a protocol type converter to allow us to talk to the uh, protocol that the battery uses, which is a variant 
of it. It's kind of close to a one wire protocol. But so we will program the Arduino. Use the Arduino stuff. So let's build it. And it built correctly. And we will program it. And the board programmed correctly. And if we look at, okay, I've got the port TTY ACM0. So I have the uh, open battery information. Um, there is a Python application that goes along with this, uh, um, with this project as well. And the reason for the Python program is because this Arduino board, the only thing this Arduino board does is it talks binary and it, it translates the binary commands into the one wire protocol and back. So the actual interpretation from the binary uh, commands to something visible on the screen is through this Python program. So if we open it up, we can choose the module selection, the interface, and the serial port. And if we connect to it, and if everything worked out, we should connect. Okay, it's connected version 1.2.0. I may be running a little bit of an older version here. So what we're going to do is first of all, we have every, everything connected, it seems. So we will put the battery on. And we're going to click on read battery model. So this is the working battery. And we'll notice, okay, this model supports only diagnostics. And we've got a charge count of 11 and the battery state is unlocked. If we read the battery data, we'll actually get all the different cell voltages also, which is kind of cool to see. And there is a temperature sensor inside. So this is the working battery that doesn't have a problem. So let's remove this and let's apply the non-working battery. So connecting the non-working battery in, we'll repeat, we'll read the battery model, let's clear first. Read battery model. Of course, this version only supports diagnostics. If this was, this version is a little bit older, but if it included support for this type of battery, this clear errors button would be available and it would be able to clear the errors off the battery. Although this version does not support it. We will go into that in a, just a bit. This is an older type of battery that doesn't support all the various diagnostic and maintenance commands that some of the new batteries support. Okay, we'll notice that the battery is locked. We have, let's read the battery data. I did manually charge this battery up and these were all charged up correctly. It looks like we may have one slightly weak cell, but the difference is only 0 0.09 volts, so it should be okay. The total voltage count, we're at 20.236 volts. Okay, so as far as this program goes, we know that the hardware works, and we know that the battery, um, the battery, we can talk to the battery, the, we can interface to the battery. So let's go and we're gonna try a test program that was provided by the author of this open battery information to see if we can unlock the battery. We're gonna try again. I, on a previous video, I tried this same procedure before, but it did not quite work. So we're going to try it again. So I don't have the source code for this. It was provided as just a binary file. So we're going to program that binary file into the Arduino board. So we'll paste this into the command prompt. And we will write that in. Okay, so we need one more command prompt and we're going to open up a terminal program so we're going to just use Minicom. The dash S command to allow us to select the COM port. So we're going to select serial port. If we look from our previous window, it's TTYACM0. So 
So we'll go into Serial Setup, and the TTY ACM0. All other settings are correct. Not create lock file, that's okay. All right, now, looks like we're talking with the Arduino. If we reset it, it'll come up with this menu too. So we're going to read battery information. And yeah, it's always seemed to do this. It does not return anything. So let's see what happens if we clear the errors. Okay, so let me make this a little bit larger. Let me reset this. We'll do this up since I made my window larger. So reset this. Okay. We're going to read the battery message first. Okay, we're going to go clear errors. Now, assuming that this will work, I'm going to copy and paste this because I would like a copy of all this in case this fails. I have a copy of what was changed. Go ahead and tell it yes. All right. Clear and rewrite content. Block count, block erase, erasing block count 25, block erase successful. Okay. Can I paste the results in here? Okay. Let's try one more time. Actually, Let's read battery information again. Oh, this actually returns a value now. If we attempt to clear errors again, what is it going to do? Before fix, after fix. All right, so let's see if this fixed. So we're going to, first of all, we're going to reflash the open battery information, the Arduino program, onto the battery, onto the battery, onto the Arduino, and then we'll attempt to rerun the open battery information. Let's see if that error reset. So first we have to exit Minicom here. Because it is connected to the serial port. So now that the serial port is not busy, we can reprogram the Arduino with the original program. It's programmed. We'll go back to open battery information. Oh, we didn't disconnect properly. It still connects. Read battery model. Failed to get response after two attempts. So let's try it again. Ooh, it says it's unlocked. So, if it's unlocked, this should charge now. So let's take this battery. Now, this battery was previously locked out, remember? Oh, it is charging. I think we just fixed this battery. So anyway, to recap, the, there's a program out that is being developed as an open source solution called Open Battery Information. Um, just a minute. I manually charge this battery and the charger, well, the battery is full because I manually charged it. So the charger attempted to charge the battery and it's already full. That's okay. And let's try it on the drill. Does it work? It works. This is great. Fix the battery without having to replace the controller board inside. This is really cool. 
So anyway, the author of this program is working on a solution to fix these types, including these older cells too. So I would uh, recommend checking out his homepage. I will put a link in this video's description to link to that. It's called Open Battery Information, and it's basically a project, not only for Makita batteries, but for other uh, makers' batteries as well, to be able to reset the lockout flag that disables the battery when the charger or the battery detect a fault. Sometimes the fault is, some, sometimes there is an actual fault in the battery and the flag shouldn't be reset, but often there were times, uh, like in my case, where due to a cell misbalance, the charger locked out the battery. And after I rebalanced the cells, that lockout state would not clear. So there, there are some use cases for this. So anyway, this works great. So I will leave a link in the video's description down below, and I recommend you check out this project. And thanks for watching, and we will see you on the next video.